I'm Gavin Haynes, and I'm a man. As a man, I've ruled society for millennia, even if it doesn't always feel like it when I'm trying to get a waiter's attention. But ruling society isn't easy, and as an effete British arsehole, I've always looked towards Americans for a steer on what it takes to be a man. New York, baby! Mainly, that's meant the key pillars of monster truck rallies, fraternity hazings, strongman competitions, and Republican candidates bragging about the dimensions of their uh, hands. They're fairly large, actually. But lately, it seems there's a growing movement of American men who think that something has gone wrong. The once supreme American male is lost, flailing, out of sync with his wider world and his true feelings. The best way to fix this, they contend, is to really focus on what it means to be a man. They're interested in taking masculinity itself by the cojones and reforming it into a new gospel of conscious manhood. They may be outsiders today, but they think they're the chosen ones. I'm here to meet these non-conformists and have the new American masculinity mansplained to me. First, though, I wanted to find the most needless, balls-out expression of male competitive energy. And I found it soon enough in the gamification of America's most popular pastime, eating. Competitive eating has been around since 1916, the year of the first Nathan's Famous Hot Dog competition. And in the modern world, the likes of Man vs. Foods has taken the idea of eating a pulled pork burrito the size of a baby's torso into the mainstream. I'm at the lunchbox in Staten Island, where I'm about to eat the mother load, a 10 pound sloppy joe I must finish in under 30 minutes. We have uh, eight pounds of our secret recipe mojo, quarter pound of onions, and a full pound of cheese sauce. I've managed to track down a competitive eater called Wayne, who'd already done serious damage to the lunchbox's wall of fame, and possibly also its toilets. I like to bring a big spoon. <laughs> so are you ready? I have my own spoon, Wayne. I have a spoon it's for you. terribly thoughtful of you. Oh, and it's still warm from your body heat. Okay, I mean, is this an assertion of your masculinity, Wayne? Is of course. Something, um, I mean, is that what modern American man is into? Like, slapping his dick on the table and oh, yeah. waving it about? A big dick. Yeah, <laughs> a big dick. A big dick. <laughs> Someone said that's a negative conception of masculinity, Wayne. I don't know. Yeah. Well, let's ask the ladies. Do you ever ask the ladies? Have yeah. you ever heard a, a lady turn down a big I dick? Mean, do you? <laughs> well, I don't know. There we go. You ready for this? I'm ready for this. Cheers, buddy. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> we have two contenders for the mother load challenge. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's go, guys. Oh. Mm. All right. Edible. This I mean, is as masculine as you can get right now. Eating a big meal. How did you learn to be a man? From my dad. He told me to be confident in myself. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I'm doing right now. I'm confident yeah. that we're going to finish this, and you need to be confident also. Do you think it's a bad thing to be girly? If you're over girly, yes. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. right now, you need to do more eating. You're being right. a little girly. Mm. I mean, it's just what Americans normally eat. Do they like it? Oh, yeah. Mm. All right, guys, this is what separates the boys from the men. Gavin, how are we looking, Gavin? Which is not good. No, no I'm all right. I'm no, all right, no. Don't do it. Mm. Don't do it. It's just so horrible. If this was what it took to be a man, then I couldn't say my testosterone levels seemed to have markedly increased. My blood sugar levels, however, were pushing me towards a hypermanly diabetic coma. I hear the Rocky theme song in the background right now. I hate a tiger. I want to finally clock this. Let's see what we got. We are good at 6.15, ladies and gentlemen. Don't you feel more manly now? <laughs> Having bested the mother load, it was home for a few hours of queasy and tacit punctuated sleep. controversial male studies expert, Dr. Edward Stevens, presents one thread of men's studies that emphasizes the physical differences between men and women. They fear that the world is becoming increasingly feminized, leaving men without the traits needed to succeed. 
Fewer men than women graduate from college nowadays, and if you ask Dr. Edward Stevens why, he'd tell you it's because of the increasing feminization of the education system, something he's working to redress with his foundation for male studies. I guess the last 10,000 years of uh, male cultural dominance were basically a clerical error. If you ever watch, it could be primates, and you watch the little boy monkeys are running around, and they're biting each other, and they're <laughs> chasing each other. And if you watch little boys at play, they do what's called rough and tumble. And if you watch little girls at play, they're, you know, they're more sedate and whatnot. So if you have boys standing around in a circle and they're passing a ball around while they're, while they're learning geography, they learn better. Would girls also benefit from passing a ball around during class? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we have to start thinking about how does a boy become a man? So you reject the, I guess, more modern idea that gender is a pretty constructed, fluid thing. You think there are real biological, mental differences between Why men and women? on God's earth would you call that a modern idea? That's a degenerative idea that comes out of sociology. Just in terms of your brain, you've got two hemispheres and a little connector called the corpus callosum, and in females it's this thick, yeah. and males it's this thick. So if something happens with a woman, they get a lot of emotions. You get an impulse to act. In this era of feminism, we're going to have to redefine ourselves, but not in terms of feminine concepts, but in regard to what we are from an evolutionary point of view. Do you think men are being culturally imprisoned by the feminist movement? I, I've created a few descriptors for this, one of which is the lace curtain which is my equivalent of the glass ceiling. Situations where there are many more women in the workforce than men, the men can see through the curtain, but they can't get through it. You know, one of the important things that we've been through in this last go-round with the recession is men recession. not being able to find work. This really goes against our biology. Men who want to be stay-at-home dads, you know, it's culturally still frowned upon. I mean, what would you say to them? Do you have any sort of support for them? <clears throat> I think a man who wants to stay at home and be a stay-at-home dad, um, he's uh, uh, choosing a good path. Mm. He doesn't have to work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have to go out and break his well, neck, break his back. Mm. Dr. Stevens was adamant that men were from Mars and women just weren't, and that we could all only truly be happy if we acknowledged that equal didn't mean the same. While women have spent years talking about where they want to be in society, men have barely considered the question, and as a result, they've watched passively as their roles have changed around them. Men are finished at the top of the cognitive pyramid. Women are now a majority at our universities, graduate schools of law, business, and medicine. But what about those men who were disobeying all of Dr. Stevens' genetic commandments, breaking with what many would consider the deepest coding of all, the bond between mother and child? But I tracked down at least one man who'd done just that. Lance had given up the nine to five to let his high-flying wife go out and win some bread for a change. Was this, as Dr. Morning, Stevens buddy. had joked, a leisure lifestyle nirvana? Or was it, as Dr. Stevens' work seemed to imply, a recipe for misery? Good morning, sweetie pie. Men with babies. Don't get me wrong, I'd always been keen on spreading my genes, but so was Genghis Khan. Didn't mean he hung around. I watched Lance putter about doing chores for the kids and tried to recognize the emotions flickering across his face. It was the one I'd feared most, undiluted joy. You made a big poop, didn't you? Did you make big poopies? Life is upside down right now. We're just getting through each and every day. I'm very fortunate to be able to participate where my dad certainly didn't. You know, my mom was the at-home mom and my dad was the primary breadwinner. He wasn't an active participant with changing diapers, getting me fed, that kind of thing. <laughs> now this is Lance's little daughter, uh, Jade, who is not going to school, but in the background, young Jake is getting his final teeth brush of the morning and they're heading off to school. My previous, what is my previous experience with kids? Um, I've looked at them in parks, but not too directly, I guess. Um, people, you know, people cast assumptions. Oh no, oh, does, does this mean she's still, she's, she's fine, right? She's not kind Probably of going fine. to die or anything, no. 
Do you feel that you've stepped back in order to let your wife step forward? Maybe a step back in my career to let my wife have the opportunity to excel. My wife and I, we did what was best for our family. And so I am no longer earning an income. But because she values the work I do, it's like we're earning money for the family. I don't feel like it hurts me in my identity because I'm not earning a paycheck every week. Well, that's it, so long as the other person sees the value in what you're doing. Yes, and, that and so I could see where it might you. be tricky in some yeah. other families where it's like, you're home all day, you're not what earning have you done? A... What have you done all exactly. day? Exactly, you know, why isn't the house home clean? And you're still in your gym jams, yeah. Lonely as it may sometimes feel, Lance certainly isn't alone. Dr. Beth Latshaw's 2009 study suggested there are more than a million stay-at-home dads in America. And it was to reach out to other dads that Lance had started New York's first meetup group for them. Love you, bud. Goodbye, Jake. With Jake's safety at school, he'd invited me to a well-earned bro fest in the park. We're meeting up with a small group of dads. Dads could be at home by themselves in the confines of our small apartments and um, be socially this. isolated, or yeah. you can crave some adult interaction. Good to see you again. Good to see you. Thanks for coming. So Nick, when did you become a stay-at-home dad? I was working for a music agency, and then once my wife got pregnant and we both made the decision, instead of hiring, you know, nanny or go to, you know, daycare, that, you know, I would stay home with, uh, you know, with the baby. And how do you deal with the challenges of that on a day-to-day -day basis? It's definitely challenging, I mean, especially being in the reverse role. Do you feel the bird? Do you feel unmanly? Do you feel like you're... At times, I mean, coming from working in a music agency where I was representing, you know, major DJs and live acts and traveling the world and partying and going to clubs and then, you know, a year later being a stay-at-home dad is definitely a, you know, a 180. Stay-at-home dads have complicated lives, balancing the needs of their wives and kids with their own personal egos. I hadn't thought much about having kids before, but hanging out with Lance and the kids made it seem more of a reward than a punishment. I'm in Westchester to speak with Ray Rigoglioso, a life coach and cultural theorist who's written the book Gay Men and the New Way Forward. Ray has promised to take me into his house and talk me through the 14-point test, which will decide how masculine I am and potentially how gay I am too. I'm terrified, but as a real man, I'm just going to go with it. The mission is to understand and advance awareness of gay men's contributions to society. I became curious. That's how it began. It was really just a curiosity. And it evolved into an understanding of our gifts, those things that gay men do that are different than what the majority of heterosexual men do, for instance. What is the, the ultimate prize here? Is it to be the most kind of er man you can think of, or is it to, I guess, kind of embody some feminine traits? It is, that's the great dilemma, isn't it? it? It's really to embody both. The challenge with the way masculinity is understood is that it, it emphasizes masculine over feminine. So to express feminine traits, is devalued and shamed. What is needed in the world right now, it's the ability to be masculine and to be feminine. So when you are able to do both, you are a very powerful problem solver. You innovate, you bring different ways of human relation into the room. And this is what I see with gay men, that it's a trait, it's a gift that we come pre-wired with. We embody masculinity differently because we express both. And, and this is what humanity will need to move toward if we're going to survive on the planet. Okay, um, and as part of that, there is um, a test that you give? Yes, yes. And um, what does that entail? It begins with the three-dimensional masculine-feminine profile. Okay. Okay, so do you tend to act as a leader? I'm more of a follower, Ray. Okay, analytical? Yep. Okay, assertive? Uh, no. Individualistic? Yes. Okay, do you make decisions easily? No. Let's go to the feminine traits. Oh. All right, do you consider yourself affectionate? Uh, no. Okay. Are you eager to soothe hurt feelings? Uh, no. No, okay. Tender? No. No. These are, these are yeah. universal traits. Yeah. They're just, our, our cultures determine whether they're masculine yeah. or feminine, right? So in terms of how you hold your hands, do you tend to hold them at your side or do you hold them on your hip? Um, Wherever is the least awkward. Do you ha tend to have a narrower or a wider range of attire? 
Uh, his coin arrow. Arrow? Okay. It yeah. Kinda, this is just meant to get you to think. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to take the numbers down to the bottom. Okay, the total's one, two, three, four. Okay. For your body, you tend to assess yourself a little bit more masculine. Okay? Okay. All right. Same ratios. For your body movements and posture, a little more masculine than feminine. Okay. And same with the style ah, of dress. Yeah. All right? So that's consistent across all three. That's me. Okay. Good. Ray's test saw me for what I was. A man with unimaginative dress sense and awkwardly placed arms. I was naked before him. I quickly got psychically dressed, though, and headed off to another group with bold ideas about how learning to cry with other guys could change your life. As men, if we feel trapped by an expectation of who we need to be, I have to be father or I have to be provider. The Braveheart Men's Group was founded in 2010 with the goal of breaking down the barriers that divide men mainly by re-educating themselves on what it was to be a man. I decided to head to upstate New York, where a group of brave hearts had already amassed, with a clear intent of loving, supporting, and barrier-breaking at a log cabin in the woods. After four hours in the car, we've landed in upstate New York, and uh, I am about to meet the brave hearts men's support group, and I'm super excited because this is going to be my first log cabin slumber party since I was 11 years old, so let's go and meet them. Hello. Hey, Gavin. Hey What's up, man? We get hugs here. It felt cozy being embraced by men. Long hug. You get yeah. long hug. <laughs> I realized, as good as a woman feels, these were different hugs. These were unconditional. So, you're all men, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and we're men. Let's walk. Manly men. men. <laughs> We meet once a week to talk about different topics that come up for men. We all have these different stereotypes of the man that we're supposed to be. So for me, it was always about being as strong as I could be, being the best, you know, getting the most girls, it was drinking the most, it was doing all these things like the most, the most, and the most, better, stronger, faster, bigger. And did you manage that? <laughs> as best I could okay. until I crashed and burned. As much as I was enjoying the manly atmosphere, I couldn't help but feel that should we encounter another men's retreat in these woods, they might set upon us and beat us up as sissies. Maybe there's something in this whole masculinity thing. Yeah. All right, brother. Yeah, you're good. We got brother, you. take me to safety. Yeah. Oh. Now you got to jump. Okay. Right. Jump I'm South just going to, yeah, I'm going to leap the yeah. ponds. Right. Nice, beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> This is one of the few communities of men that I can be together with and play. Like yeah. play like I'm like a six-year-old, an eight-year-old, whatever dumb, weird, stupid, goofy idea I have. Uh, this is a great space to do that in. We act so self-restrained in our daily life because as a professional man, I'm not supposed to do that. But I want to do that because I'm a man and I have a need to play and, and be joyful with, with, with fellow men. Is this the Lost Boys Club then? I guess, me. Yeah. Yeah. So what we're doing is trying to be unapologetic in our moving. So part of that, the silliness of doing these gestures, is to explore being playful and what happens with your voice when you are completely free. So the first thing we're going to do is imagine you're a tree in the wind. And you're going to make this sound. Shh. Awesome. Now we're going to do it like this. Like a tree in the wind, exactly just like that. Beautiful, Gavin, that's so free, so awesome, beautiful. I was starting to think that a conversation about masculinity didn't start with men learning to be men, but instead learning to be boys. <laughs> nice job. So let's work on the shimmy. Shoulder, 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 faster, faster, faster. Good, now make some sound. <laughs> shimmy to the left. And then a shimmy down. <laughs> One, two, three. Uh, nice. What would you like? We'll follow. Let's go. Do you want to lead us through something? Well, we just hit each other with sticks. And... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Was, uh, Shall we? Right. <laughs> All right. The Braveheart crew seemed to be giving me the chance at a second childhood, and since the first one had been ruined by the tragic death of Diana, Princess of Wales, it seemed like a chance worth taking. Drop it and group hug him. <laughs> the new masculine! The new masculine! Take it! Yeah! Yeah! Oh, yeah! They were trying to make me less stiff, but I guess the British in me is more than just a stiff upper lip. It's the entire torso and most of the lower body, too. What was your favorite thing from today? 
I think my favorite moment of the day w was watching you, Gavin, do the, the jaw thing. <laughs> <laughs> and the shimmy. <laughs> yeah. That was definitely my Thank favorite. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> do you think you'll ever outgrow the group, or do you think you'll all just grow together for life? Well, the thing with growth is you've never really arrived. You're always, you, you always continue growing. You can grow in, together, apart, and in parallel. I, I think there's always, there will always be a place in my life for, for a group like this. Does anyone have any s'mores? S'mores? <laughs> good night, brave hearts. Hey, good night, good night, gosh. Good night, oh, Gavin. Good night. Good night. <laughs> While I dreamed, I remembered all my fun times with the men of America. In many ways, this new masculinity is concerned with the same timeless basic goods like love and acceptance. I certainly sensed they were all scrabbling to keep up in a world where the messages about men had gone from merely paradoxical to utterly contradictory. It felt like a reaction to broader trends in society, to our gender politic in 2010s. With everyone else dialing into their sexual identities, is it really so strange that men are taking note? Would you like to hug? <laughs> Shall we embrace each other yeah, and say goodbye? Like, let's get back. Come on. All right. <laughs> Take care, men of America. There be sure go. to hug each other regularly. Thank Thanks for coming. Really on masculine energy. Oh, no. Wow. That's the end. Thank you. I already miss Gavin. I miss him so much. <laughs> All right, let's eat. He hugs off. <laughs>